Roach, Co- Roach Coach. <laughs> podcast. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Roach Coach Podcast, the journey to create the new metal canon. My name is Lauren Kozlowski. With me this week, the Indigo Angel, Jennifer Sosha. Hello. And the original Roach Rider, Mr. Matt Nas. Keep it rolling, baby. There we go, ladies and gentlemen. Back with you, back here in the Indigo basement. Do you feel it? I can feel it. Mm-hmm. I can feel it because it's the final album episode of the year, you guys. Wow. Mm. We've had quite a year. Jenny, it's been your retirement year. My year of retirement, yeah. Uh, we've had you back, obviously, a few times. Six times. Six <laughs> times, eight times. <laughs> You've been back. Yeah. Uh, but less than the normal, what, 32 times a That's year. That's right. Um, how's, your, how's your retirement year been going? Uh, Pretty good. It's been all right. It's um, I'm definitely still, uh, you know, figuring out how to balance being a person and being a parent and a partner and all that shit so i think i made the right decision but i do miss doing this regularly but i still talk to you guys like almost every day yeah every day I'm still so talking, yeah. mm-hmm. you know anyway miss <laughs> whatever we, we miss you that's <laughs> we, all we miss you we miss you we're glad that you're able to come back this week uh to talk about well we gotta talk about of ours and corn it's been a minute it has been. It yeah, has been. Let's talk about them We're behind talk- their backs because yeah. they're not listening. <laughs> Don't tell Jonathan Don't Davis. Tell Don't tell Jonathan. Don't tell. That's right. We're talking about the ninth studio album by Corn. Corn three. Remember who you are. Wow. Mm-hmm. Jenny, when did this album come out? This album was released on July thirteenth, twenty ten. All right, so that is a come down record. It's for sure. Down. It's the come down. Mm-hmm. Jenny, it's July of 2010. It's the summertime. Yeah. Where are you in relation to Corn 3? Um, not anywhere. Okay. I I have no idea this album was released. Mm. Uh, I think I'm I'm improvising. You're That's all I'm doing. Yeah. All you're doing. I'm improvising. I'm listening to metal. Okay. Probably being forced to listen to Bare Naked Ladies because I'm improvising. <laughs> 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 got him. Got him. Improvisers. Take yeah, that. yeah. You, you got pieces em. of shit. I got you. you got him. Like, They're on fire. <laughs> That's right. They're so embarrassed. Uh, looking at their yeah. copies of Maroon going, I thought she was a fan. <laughs> no. Yeah. You never just, know. Just give the much music thing a try again. It's amazing. They just <laughs> went to the box and sing this. <laughs> Am I the only one? Um, <laughs> uh, no, you're not the only one. <laughs> but you might be the only one in this room. Oh, but true. in the world, no. No, <laughs> no, no, no. no. Um, anyway, I, I guess I'm just taking pot shots at Bare Naked Ladies now. They're probably fine. Uh, but yeah, no, I wasn't I wasn't aware that this was happening. Uh, how about you guys? Matt? No, no idea that this was happening. In 2010, I was engaged in July. Congratulations. Uh, yes. Thank you so much. <laughs> When's the and wedding? The wedding was in December of 2010. Oh, we missed it. You did. <laughs> we did uh, miss it. But I would say that I was listening definitely to Dark Twisted Fantasy, but that had not come out yet. I believe that was like the back half of 2010. Yeah, it was, it was the Thanksgiving of 2010, yes. Probably listening to This Is Happening, the mm. LCD sound system. Definitely mm. listening to Body Talk mm. and Contra and... Uh, ooh, the Drake. Thank me later. Come on, what a big summer for Drake! <laughs> what a big summer for Drake. <laughs> Drake had a huge summer. Drake had a huge summer. He made the house I improv team. He did. He did. He, Drake was just like, I'm gonna get ready to rock some fifty room, fifty fifty seat rooms. I'm By the way, improvisers thing. listening, y- you can have a big summer for Drake as your team name. Absolutely free. <laughs> Ooh. Please welcome to the stage a big summer for Drake. <laughs> you know what? I think that's a really good team name. I think they could really pack them in for at least a couple months before people realize there's nothing Drake related. <laughs> I think <laughs> they could do it. Except mm-hmm. they, they play God's plan at the beginning. Oh, yeah. Like when they walk on mm-hmm. and do that running clap jump. Yeah. You know what? You know what? <laughs> Another good one to come out to? Start from the bottom. Ooh, mm-hmm. that's wow. a good one. Start from the bottom, and now, now we're, we're playing for you. Still at now the we're bottom. For you. <laughs> you five people who will be mildly entertained. That's right. It started at the bottom. Stay here. And there. <laughs> bottom ash. Still bottom adjacent. So we're just here to have fun. We're just uh, here to have fun. We are really giving. 
giving it to and all of our scenes tonight. are about fighting. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Okay, I'm looking. I'm looking now at Wikipedia. I do. I'm having a clearer image of where I was in 2010. Wow! 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 wow, wow. Uh, okay. I I have I have found my blog where I posted my okay. top <laughs> albums of 2010. Guys, let's hear it. Can't wait. All right. I, I did 25. I won't read all 25. Please do. Um, I will start. I'll do. We'll, uh, here's the top 10. All right. Here we go. Here we go. Top 10. Bag Raiders by Bag Raiders. Deftones Diamond Eyes. Mm. Uh, Diddy Dirty Money, Last Train to Paris. Sorry. <laughs> uh, this is happening by LCD Sound System. Uh, Flockavelli by oh. Waka Flocka Flame. Waka. Uh, the Dream, Love King. Groove Armada, Black Light. Uh, Chemical Brothers Further, Kalise Flesh Tone, and number one, My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy, Kanye West. The also, best. sorry. Uh, uh-huh. <laughs> we just got to, every year, you just got to apologize for more and more people that I you liked. Can't. Look, Twisted mm-hmm. Fantasy uh, is the, probably the biggest album that I can separate artist from art from. You can? I can. <laughs> I can because yeah. we played <laughs> we played two songs at our wedding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I played yeah. so much at my wedding from so many of these artists. Ah, gee, well, I there are some other people further down in my twenties that uh, in my twenties on my twenty five list that yeah I'm not even gonna mention. Anyway, that's where it was. I will say though, I did know about this album. I did download this record off okay. a leak site and did listen to it a few times at the time because I remember I was working at Target at the time and I was doing the cash drawer tallies in the yes. in the uh, cash room and they said I said can I bring music in or bring like an iPod and they're like absolutely yes yeah. so I'd come in there with my little speakers and I'd blast out whatever so I remember one of the first listens I did was on like this like weird iPod dock listening to this album and thinking all right it's all right it's corn it's corn, but it did kind of fell. It, 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 yeah, it had fallen. I'd not listened to it in a long time. I know I listened to it when I did an episode of discography discussion. Yes. But what I've learned, and Matt, you've learned this too, is that when you would do an episode of that show and you would listen to any given artist and all of their albums in rapid succession, oh. it turns into a little mush in your head. Oh, yeah. So by the end, you're like, you just remember little bits. And then when you sit down and you're looking at Dan, you're just like, yeah, corn. remember where you are. Yeah, that one was. I was in the middle of my list. Yeah. I think I was cleaning a bathroom when I, I did to that KMFDM, one. and it might as well have just been ACDC records. It's mm-hmm. like, ah, mm-hmm. uh, yep, they're all the same ish. Yeah. So yeah. So listening to this for this episode was it felt very new to me in that way. It just felt like oh, this was it felt a very fresh listen for an album I had kind of a gift of a new corn record for you. A little bit, little bit. Uh, Jenny, who's in corn? On this album. On this album, mm-hmm. I'll tell you who's in corn. It's Jonathan Davis uh, on vocals and bagpipes, James Monkey Schaefer on guitar, lap steel, and backing vocals, Reginald Fieldy Arvizu on bass, and we're bringing in our touring drummer, Ray Luzier, whose name I'm probably mispronouncing. I think you're saying it right. I think you're nailing well, it. I think you're nailing it. Okay, then. No matter what, in this room, it's right. It's right. Uh, yes. He's not your family. He's, uh, he not, is not my you're family. You're not putting food on him. I'm not, but he is putting the sticks on the drum. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> you there know what is. I mean. Yeah. You know what I mean. Woo. He's drumming. He is. <laughs> definitely drumming. He's definitely drumming on this record. <laughs> You'll hear him. You'll hear him in about 35 minutes. When you we listen to the first song. That's <laughs> right. You're going to hear him. 35 minutes? <laughs> is there a doc? <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so Ray has joined the band as their new drummer. Um, and it's funny to think of him as he, it's no longer, he's been in the band now 13 Years. So did my ears deceive me, or did I not hear Brian Head Welch? Head's still out. Wow. Head's still out. Head's out for a minute. I did not realize it was two albums that he was out. Matt, there's another one after this one that he's also not on. Mm. He's mm. out. He's out for a while. Okay. Okay. Before we get in here, um, wait a minute. So you're just telling me that there's one guitar? Okay. Matt, there's one guitar. Right. With... <laughs> Seven strings? It's one guitar with seven strings. Yeah. Normally, maybe on the classic corn sound, right. you had 14 mm-hmm. strings right. with two seven-string guitars. Correct. Creating what I like to call 
the corn signature sound. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, now, we don't know how many strings are on the lap steel. <laughs> <laughs> there are a lot of yeah. strings on the well, lap. How big is your lap? How big's your lap? <laughs> I have a pretty generous lap. I well, do I, too. Monkey seems like a pretty tall guy. Yeah. I mean, he might have crazy legs. Matt, are you Googling monkey height? I'm definitely doing oh. that. Yeah. <laughs> how many strings can fit <laughs> on a lap? Oh. Yeah. Oh. Well, I'm, I'm here to tell you that a lap steel guitar. Six strings. Okay. Well, that's what they said about other guitars before. And as we know. If, if Monkey made a seven string lap steel, <laughs> I think Nashville would implode. They'd be wow. like, no, why? Yeah, that would be. Okay. So according according to, um, according to Reddit, um, JD, okay, this this is okay. This this sounds bullshit. This is the JD and Fieldy are six two. There's no way Fieldy's six two. In what world? Yeah. That, who wrote I feel this? like this is the world now where guys are like, I gotta be at least six foot. Like no. there became a thing where it's like everybody has to be six feet tall. No way. Okay, then okay, then th- then this is that head and monkey are six feet and Ray is five eleven. I I'm believe the Ray. Is... I'm gonna need a corn um height chart. Uh, I'm gonna yeah. Okay, wait. This other one here from a Weebly website, the tourbus.com. <laughs> Tourbus.weebly.com says that monkey is 6'2. I, I'm I'm believing that. I've seen him. He seems taller. Um Fieldy over 5'8, impossible. Mm. Mm. I'm just saying it. Well, I'm letting you know right now that there is such a thing as a seven-string lap steel guitar. Okay. Because Gibson made it and it's called the Ultratone. All Ooh. Right. All, right. All right. Uh let's talk about. And Nashville's still standing, so mm-hmm. I take back all of my comments. Uh, let's talk about who is the producer on this I album. I know who's the producer on this record. Do you want to say it? Ooh, I think you have the right. You have earned. The, oh, you've earned the privilege. Oh, wow. to say the, the angels. There name. are certain rights afforded to me in the Constitution. <laughs> We the people <laughs> would like to inform you that Ross Robinson yes! is the producer of this record. Uh, <laughs> it is my right. Is it your to right to say right. the angel's name. <laughs> that is correct. That is right. The angel has returned um, uh, to produce this record. Now, I want you to know that everyone, I mean me, I remember being like, Ross is back? This is exciting to hear. Afterwards, Jonathan Davis went over to the Noisy blog and they had him rank all the records. And he said, this one, not so much. He said, working with Ross, we were trying to do do album one again, do album two again. And he's like, we're grown ass men. I mean, he doesn't quite out and say it, but there's a vibe there where it literally is like, Ross wanted to be like, you guys are grinding away. You guys are... Are, are, are hungry you're trying to do this and and jonathan davis is like i have to meet with my lawn guy at like four so i can't be here all night for this you know he, he, he's like i've got a low rider shop to get back to mm-hmm. yeah yeah mm-hmm. monkey's like i gotta go uh do monkey things <laughs> I don't know oh, what monkeys into. Poor monkey, really taking it out of the uh, chin. He just had to go do monkey things, and uh, and Ray's like, "I'm the new guy, so whatever." You I need. don't care. Yeah, happy to be putting food happy on my to family. Be there. Um, I will say, uh, reading through the wiki, it was interesting how this album um, progressed. Uh, this quote from Jonathan Davis. I don't know if you saw this one, Jenny. Um, I'll just start. It says, "In April of 2009, Jonathan Davis revealed that he was planning to make the album a concept album." That was to lyrically revolve around the concept of five symbols Mm -hmm. that Davis identified as the downfall of man. (laughs) One of these symbols was organized religion, something that Davis felt were responsible for a lot of things that have gone wrong in the world today. And that is cited in two different places. The other symbols, drugs, Mm -hmm. power, money. Yep. And time. No, time. That'll get uh, you. Time will (laughs) fucking get you. Time is the thing that gets us all. Mm -hmm. It's true. It's very true. Uh, In September of 2009, Davis said that his idea for a concept album was not turning out as he had intended. He proposed that instead he was just going to sing however he felt at the moment. (laughs) (laughs) Davis also communicated the album would combine the raw catharsis of early corn records with the storytelling of recent records. Uh, Ran it up the flagpole, (laughs) took it right back down. Uh, Here's the quote. I wanted it to start out as a concept album, but now there are other things coming up that I want to talk about. I don't know necessarily if the concept's going to stick or not. It's weird. I've been humming my lyrics along with the band as they play. I haven't done that in forever. 
We usually do our part separately, but then I do my thing over the music after the song was done. We've been writing all together as a band this time. I've been freestyling all of these lyrics that aren't necessarily about the five things I initially came up with for the album's concept. It's totally freestyling. Complete stream of consciousness. I'm really digging it. I might just go with what's coming out of my body at that moment. What? That definitely is evident in <laughs> some of the songs. Like You can tell that he's just like saying what comes to his mind. There's one song in particular that I actually really like. The lyrics make me laugh, but... <laughs> I mean, what there's like very little that is more relatable to me than being like, I'm gonna do this in this in this ambition, in ambition, this. ambition, and then ambition. you're just like, I'm tired. I'm, <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm gonna actually order a pizza. <laughs> like, I think tonight I'm gonna make. Blah, 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 blah. No, no, I get it. I get it. It's that it's that difference. You go to the grocery store on Sunday, and you're like, oh. I'm going to make this incredible seasoned chicken. And you buy the marinade. You buy the chicken. And you get it all ready. And you take it home. And that night you put it in the bag. You get in the marinade. You set it in the fridge. You're like, tomorrow, you and me chicken. Mm -hmm. And then you get home from work after just a day. Oh, a real day. And you're like, and you think about, what am I going to eat? And you think about that marinade chicken. You're like, I got to put it in the oven. I got I to gotta cut up a side. I didn't cut a side up. Oh shit! There's Culver's. Yeah. Oh man, Culver's is real. Culver's is real. And then that's what happens. Yeah. And Jonathan Davis sitting there, and just you know, you know that in April 2009, this concept, these five things, he was probably all fucking in. He oh, probably yeah. had a fucking oh, yeah. whiteboard, and he was like, "Time, power, religion." Mm -hmm. He was in it. We have to call him out. We gotta call <laughs> gotta all call. of them. Call call out big time. That's what I mean. That's like what his whole movie was about, basically. Like all of this was there. The greatest lie the devil of told, the devil told was <laughs> we're not doing DoorDash next week. Because <laughs> we are. We are. That's what American Satan should have been about. Mm, <laughs> DoorDash. 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 Canceled yeah. DoorDash orders. Oh my God. There have been so many actual fights between Mitch and I. Like, I mean, I shouldn't say that, but like, we're we're just so hungry, and the DoorDash isn't coming, and it's like, do we wait? Do we not? And we're just hungry, and we're getting hungrier and hungrier, and we're both exhausted, which is why we're not cooking. And right. then like, oh my god, like stupid fights. And then like, I like cry and go to McDonald's and like eat like three nugs, and he has like a McChicken, and then we're like, I'm sorry, <laughs> I was just really hungry. I get it, DoorDash. You know, you wonder why marriages fail. <laughs> it's because it's DoorDash. And my Door understanding dash. is, yeah, the biggest strife in a in a household is money mm -hmm. and DoorDash. Right. <laughs> right. And DoorDash is quite expensive. Oh, yeah. You know, add three more to that. You could have a concept album. Ooh. Okay. Something to think about right now. All right. Right? All right. Right now, is I feel like you're Roach all Is the Roach Coach <laughs> concept yeah. album? I'm gonna, it's going to be um, okay. Amazon Prime, yep. DoorDash. Yep. Oh, Grubhub. Oh, okay. 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 Uh, Uber, Uber or Lyft. Uber. Uber, 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 Lyft. E Uber Eats. Uber Eats. Oh, shit. Um, okay. Yeah. yeah. I didn't even think of Lyft that. Lyft Eats. Lyft Eats. That's five. <laughs> five. That's five right there. That's, That's five right there. Just taxis if we need a sixth one to yeah. tag in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, or just maybe, maybe general delivery. Carry out. Carry out. Carry out. Carry out. Carry out. Delivery. Carry out. Carry out. Yeah. Uber Eats. That's right. Grubhub. Mm -hmm. Easy Cater. Oh, I'm not familiar with Easy Cater. <laughs> <laughs> naming every food delivery middle and DoorDash. Um, yeah. Those are the five. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. All yeah. right. Okay. That's a free idea. There you go. <laughs> Take it. Take it. Take it. Make All your right. concept album. Uh, Jonathan Davis also proposed that the album would recall their early albums using a vibe that didn't sound overproduced. He elaborated. We're not trying to do Corn 2 or Life is Peachy 2, but it's just to have that vibe back where it's not too overproduced, just slamming people's faces like we did back in 94, 95, and 96. Davis concluded that the album would be simple rather than complicated, as he suggested their previous few albums were. In April 2010, Davis revealed that topics for the songs were, quote, about me living my life for others when I shouldn't, people pleasing all the time, stress, guilt, and all kinds of emotions we live with every day that destroy us and tear us down. I write about all the fake people around us and how I always try to fix other people's problems. I write what I feel, and it comes out naturally. I got a lot of shit built up inside me that doesn't go away. So 
in an interesting pivot here, Jonathan Davis has decided to make this corn album a lot about aggression and <laughs> issues. He's made a corn album. <laughs> right. <laughs> What's the new corn album going to be about? Uh, uh, feelings. Feelings. Uh, uh, things I'm upset about. You know, how people mm-hmm. are on me all the time. And taking advantage of me. Oh, man. Yeah. Untrod ground by old corn. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. Mm. Interesting. I always, when people say they're people pleasers, mm-hmm. does that like send up a signal for you? Or am I just an asshole? Like, well, I'm such a people pleaser. I'm like, mm. what? In what way do you do you think? Like, if someone says that, you think that they are they are not actually a people pleaser? Yeah. Like, oh, okay. It's not pleasing Almost like- me to hear this. <laughs> Oh, that's what you should say to them. Immediately. I'm not pleased. I'm not pleased. So I'm going to poke tell you, a hole in that. Yeah, you just be like, well, that gives me the ick. <laughs> oh, well, I hate that phrase so much. It's just, I don't know. Whatever. We don't have to get into this. We probably. There's probably a album. lot of people who are like, oh, no, is this about me? It's not. We have You're a fine. whole corn album to get into. We got a too. whole corn album to get we'll into. We'll talk about people pleasing as we go. All right. um, during the recording of the album, James Monkey Schaefer used several vintage guitars, mm. echoes, long delays, effect pedals, and reverbs, as well as employing finger picking during certain instrumental passages. I can tell you, having listened to this album three times for the show, I heard all of that. Oh, and you're gonna hear all that. Mm-hmm. Okay, mm-hmm. you're gonna hear. You're gonna hear. You're gonna go. Oh, that's a pe- that's a pedal. That's a pedal. That's a pedal. That's a pedal. Listen, me, a guy who doesn't know anything about anything. Okay, I was like. That's a fucking pedal. Yeah, I can, I can, I can tell that from space. Um, the uh, <laughs> uh, I have a physical copy of the album here. You sure do. Uh, I picked it up from one Fye over on. Uh, well, it's not there anymore. The on Fye Woodward? on Woodward. <laughs> it's a puppy gram now. It's a puppy gram now. That's tough. Uh, <laughs> just to let you know how long ago it was that I bought this album for the show. Um, I have the standard edition. I got it for a sweet five dollars and ninety nine cents. I see that nice price. Thank you, very nice price. Um, I like their a hundred percent used guarantee sticker. That's I love that one hundred percent used. I this has been you. used a hundred percent. All right, this runs through the ringer. All right, someone gave it a full listen before they decided this to give it back. Dripping jizz. This, this is one hundred percent used. And if we get a CD and we don't think someone has come on it, we, we? come on it. Yeah. <laughs> That's our 100% used guarantee. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Here's a list of what 100% yeah. used means. When, yeah. When you take your CDs to FYE right. and they look at it and it you're is. like, what are they looking for? They're looking for jizz. Right. And if they That's don't see one. it, they take it in the back and then and then it's ready. Yeah. Then they can slap the 100% used guarantee sticker on it. FYE yeah. stands for for your ejaculation. <laughs> Yeah, that's so. right. That's <laughs> exactly. Right. It is not a mystery that they're out of business. No. Mm. People didn't like the comment. <laughs> they didn't like it. <laughs> we made a big miscalculation, oh, guys. <laughs> oh, boy. People loathe the cum. I think maybe we just like cum a lot. Maybe we're in the wrong business. The record industry is changing. People don't want cum all over their stuff anymore. <laughs> Because in the nineties, people loved that. Oh, we were uh, so about it. In the oh 90s. man, yeah. yeah. Let me tell throwing you, ropes throwing ropes in the nineties. Pearl everywhere. Jam was huge. Yeah, right. exactly. <laughs> Come on, it was all there. It was there, all over. <laughs> it was everywhere. Uh, yeah. Right. <laughs> and now there's a puppy store. A puppy there's, store. Yeah, there's just a puppy you know what store. else people this don't used like? To be my playground. Puppies, <laughs> not puppies from the, like. If it's not a puppy rescue, it's like a mm. right. Bring your puppy in. It's like a puppy mill. I don't know what it is. I don't know what puppy gram is. Don't don't sue. Don't me. at me. Don't at me. I don't think they come on the puppies. My God, so. I hope not. <laughs> so you know it's different. They aren't CDs. <laughs> I know. I know. Look, I'm sorry. Should I go? No. <laughs> okay. No. I, w- I okay. Jenny, during yeah. the recording process for the album, the band referred <laughs> to it as Corn Three. Of course, okay. it is. a reference to the band's early material. Thank you, Wikipedia. <laughs> Later, the title of the album was extended. To Decorn 3, Remember Who You Are. Davis explained that the meaning of the album's title with, it comes down to one question. Who the fuck am I? Mm. It's about remembering where we came from. The title sums up everything I'm talking about lyrically. Wow. Yeah, yeah. And then Monkey said, you can lose focus of why you wanted to start playing music in the beginning because you get caught up in the money and the fame and the traveling. It's kind of like, okay, let's hit the reset button. And, uh, and then Ray 
was talking to uh, Alt Sounds, and he said, well, it's exactly what it reads as. It's Corn 3 because it's our third album with producer Ross Robinson. It's not like we're trying to start a new generation of Corn or anything, but I'm a permanent member now, so it feels like a mini fresh start. Remember who you are? Well, you're not in a giant comfy recording studio that we're used to. We try not to be overproduced and really try to capture our passion. That's pretty much what this whole record's about. There was nothing like, let's try and play our instruments perfectly. It was much more, let's just rock this. And we played what we felt at the time. It's all about the passion. I kind of miss that. Here's so many records nowadays that just sound perfect. And we see the band live, they're very untidy. You're just left with this feeling of, why? That sucks. When we play our songs live, they sound just like the album, except with the added energy of the live scenario. We're kind of proud of that. Ray, get over here. Listen. The, the, you know how like, you see a band, and they're good? Yeah. What Corn is putting out here is, what if you see a band, and they're maybe not good, but it's okay? Oh, <laughs> uh, I don't know. I, I don't mean, know. have you thought about but it? Ray is also giving big, when I joined Corn vibes. Yeah. When I joined Corn, things just changed a little bit. But for the better. A mini refresh. But a then he's also refresh. talking about the old days like he was there. It's like, hey, you know, you get there. Got to get a, uh, got that hunger, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is a hungry record. We're sleeping yeah. on cots. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, here's the thing. So I thought there was a mini doc with this. I was, I, I saw a thing that was like, there's, there. It comes with a bonus DVD. It comes with bonus features in the studio. So I thought, oh god, I've got a hot doc. We got a hot doc of them back in the studio with Ross. Not true. What it is is a collection of performances in the studio. Two songs on the album. You get little bits of people like Ross on the boards, engineers on the boards, the guys playing, but it's not a doc. It's mm. just the album, basically. Mm. And so you get little bits where like they're doing one song and Ross at the end is like, that was so good, you knocked my leg out of the socket. And then they're like, wait, for real? And he's like, yeah, yeah, it's out of the socket. And then Jonathan Davis has to go and like push his leg back into the socket. Okay. Stuff like that. This is post his injury, so. Yeah. Well, no, somebody's like, is this from first, the injury? That's his first injury. <laughs> <laughs> this is the first time he got hurt injury. was hearing Jonathan Davis rock so hard, this leg popped out of the socket. <laughs> yeah. Like, um, no, that's, think about it, That's what happened. To, that's how beat up Russ Robinson is in 2010, that just hearing Jonathan Davis crush a vocal take, his whole body <laughs> falls apart. Damn. That's That's something. That's aging for you. Yeah. Yeah. Time. Mm. Time. Time. One of the big five. One of the big five. Big five. Big five bad boys. Big five bad boys. Big Big whole album. You know what? Concept. Everybody always brings up drugs, but time will. Time will always get you. Time. Well, time. Death equals death eventually. Yes. But time plus drugs equals faster death. Mm. Yeah. It's true. It's true. Time plus. I agree. Yeah. Time plus. <laughs> Lauren and Matt are looking at me like, right? Right? Huh? <laughs> as far as I can tell, yeah. <laughs> Jenny, it's called the mother cult, and this is all it's about. Okay. Okay. I'll join. I don't have any questions. Let's go. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Yeah. You'll see me on a Hulu doc in five years. <laughs> five years. Uh, They'll pull clips from the podcast this podcast <laughs> this be like she was unwell <laughs> she was very unwell she seemed to not ans- ask any questions mm. she mostly talked about pubes and cum <laughs> the wondery podcast <laughs> also she once did three hours on glass jaw then forgot all about them when brought up with their lead singer <laughs> Yes, and it got really dark. She ate 20 nuggets in one sitting. In one sitting. <laughs> That's going to be the one. Yeah. That's going to be the centerpiece. That's the one. All the reviews be like, okay, you got to watch this doc. <laughs> for, yeah. s- for seven years, it was like it was in the dark. And then all of a sudden, we had video footage. There was. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, they'll have to have reenactors. You know, right. Or animated segments. Stuff. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm. Like cheeky little animations. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Jenny, walk us through this album art. All right. We got... Uh, remember who you are. Uh, it's a a child appears to be walking like past an oil field, and then there's like an old guy looking at her through the car. Um, we got some danger signs, and then we got the band in a car wearing Adidas and a what is this? Skylark. They're in a Skylark. I know what that is. 
And then we just got like a kid who looks like shit. <laughs> um, <laughs> like, I mean, not, you know, I like, not like. <laughs> Take that, kid. No, it's I not. I think it's intentional. I think this it's kid's not supposed to like look like through, shit. It's not like the kid didn't do a good job getting ready. It's like they look like they've been like abused and are like on know. drugs or something. They just look like shit. Not, uh-huh. not parentheses, not insulting. And then they're in the car. So oh, I'm going to guess. Sucks. I'm so the child that. endangerment theme returns. Yeah. Corn three. Right. More child in yeah. trouble. Remember who you are. Remember who you are. We're putting children, children, children in tr- deep trouble. In deep trouble. Yes. Um. So, so that's the album cover and the making of uh, this album. Um, critically, it was according to this mixed reviews. Uh, Metacritic. It has a 57 out of 100. All Music, Stephen Thomas or Lewine, who was very critical of 2007's Untitled album, noted that they've gone back to the coiled, furious sputter of their debut, but there's no disguising that Korn is an older band substitu- substituting precision for frenzy without diluting their power. Stephen, you know when you go see a band... Yep. And they're like really good. Yeah. Okay. Corn is doing something different here. All right. They're being not so good. Okay. <laughs> it is a choice. It's a choice. It's a feature, not yes. a bug. Exactly. Okay. Um he uh now this is the best part. He originally gave the album a four out of five, but later revised it to a two point five. <laughs> Whoa. Okay. Okay. I didn't know that was allowed. I thought once you like reviewed it, like it's locked in. I thought it was locked in. I mean, David Frick has to live with like all those four stars that he's given to like every Mick Jagger solo record. All right, with Rolling Stone. So, I think Stephen, you have to just live with the fact that you gave four stars to this album initially. Okay, no take backs. I'm putting it out there. Giles Morehouse of Rock Sound gave the album an eight out of ten. Noted that "Let the Guilt Go" is an absolute monster and will easily go toe to toe against mosh anthems like Slipknot's "Duality" and Drowning Pool's "Bodies" without breaking a sweat. Giles? Wow. Okay. Giles? Wow. Giles, you, you're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to get to that song. Don't worry. <laughs> you're crazy. You we'll know, see, but we'll see you in an hour. <laughs> yeah, we'll see you in an hour, guys. I was thinking about how, like, when I was younger, I really wanted to be a writer and I'd be, like, writing about my opinions and stuff. And I'm like, God, I'm so glad I never did that. And then I remember that we've done this show for seven years. I was like, bitch, you didn't write it down. You said it. <laughs> So here we are. Here we are. Do you want to like listen? I think it's time. All, All right. right. I think so it's time. Our first track here is a little intro, uh, Uber Time, which is going to take us into our first true ass track, which is Oil Dale, Leave Me Alone. We're chugging. We're chugging. We're clunking. We're saying, Leave Me Alone. We're saying, Leave Me Alone. I guys going to say corn? They're back. They're back. They're back. This, yeah. And that fret rattle is for fucking real. <laughs> that is. I, I got to tell you, listening to this on headphones, doing notes, I was like, "Oh, this is this is that corn I like. This mm-hmm. is that corn I want." And this Ross production, because I realized there is a difference between Ross's '90s production and Ross's like 2000s, 2010, like 2020s production. Um, and it really hearing this is this is sort of like in the middle of where he eventually goes with like. Because I did uh, recently decide to dip back into that Suicide Silence record. Mm. I was just like curious again. I was like, what, what does this sound like again? And like hearing all the Ross touches now and there and then going back to this album, and I'm like, oh, yeah. He definitely was just like, hey, Suicide Silence, here's my corn button. <laughs> let's, let's, let's see what we can do. Uh, but I really loved how this sounded. I really did. Um, yeah. I was just like, yeah. And yeah, Jonathan Davis screaming, why don't you just leave me alone? on like the first new song on the album. Yeah. All right, let's do it. There's a section at 240 that I wrote in my notes is called the fucking piece of sit- shit section. That's what you want. <laughs> yeah. That's what you want. It's, then, a, it's a corn promise. It's, yeah. And then at 340 is the leave me the fuck alone section. Wow. It's all in there. I wrote this is strong open. Sounds meaty. I feel like I could chew on it. It's not an all timer opener for corn, but it's solid. Jenny. Yeah, I mean, I thought it was really good. I love the way it sounds. I did feel like 100% like returning back to some of that less refined, clunkier in a good way. Mm -hmm. Uh, So, yeah, I was into it. Matt, how did you feel? 
I definitely felt that this was a classic corn sounding corn song. It is rough around the edges. It is clunky. And yeah, Jonathan sounds great. Uh, but yeah. kind of underneath that is, is also lacking something that made some of those early corn albums yeah. special. Like it, they know what to do. Right. And they can fucking do it. Yeah. But there's something. Well, it's the other thing is that when you think about there's so many corn records that have iconic openers that immediately are like immediately in like just the corn oeuvre forever. You're blind, falling away from me, mm-hmm. uh twist, uh here to stay. You know, these songs were immediately you're like, oh, the boys are back on that first one. And this one is in it's in the realm, but it's not I wouldn't put it as good as any of those. It's mm, no uh, no. No, I think it's just like there's not it's not it, it's not like as authentic or something. It's like more of a muted rage and frustration. But I feel like the idea that you're like, okay, we're gonna come back to who we were. Like you can't you can't do that. Can't be done. And I think with like a lot of the I have no idea if this like metaphor is gonna work, but like let's do it. <laughs> hey, fucking we'll see. It's like if you have an empty room and you like drop a glass or like throw something in there, it's gonna be super loud. And that's like how it feels like those feelings he was having where it was just like raw. But then like over time you have experiences, the room gets filled, things get in the room, you throw a glass down, it's like Still not like pleasant, but you have all of this other stuff in there to sort of mute the sound. All of this, like, I guess, just like experiences that build up. And so, the same way that you feel like when they started doing these records, it's Mm. just like over time, you have so much more context and so much more shit going on that it's just like, it's just not the same. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, does that make sense in any way? 100%. 100%, Great. 100%. Hundred percent. Well, I think, and also, it, if we tie into, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, it did, yeah, uh, is that when he's coming in, like, okay, it's time for the ninth corn album, right? Corn Inc. is saying, friends, time for another corn album. So he's like, oh, I've got a concept record. Here, I got my five ideas, and he's like, ah, I don't really want to do that. Okay, we're going back to basics. What else? What else is going on? You know, he's got his notepad out. What else is going on with me? I, I don't know, you know, and I think it's like he's got to think up something. He's got Ross over there who's hitting him with the Ross's rules, yeah, which he doesn't want anything to do with based off of the interviews. Yeah. Ross is over there like, I'm going to make you sing these lyrics that you wrote about your ex-wife to her face. And he's like, you did what? What is going on? What are you doing to me? Man, I got to live with this woman. What are you doing? You know, just very like these things that just don't play anymore. It's, it's really your room metaphor works really well. Yeah, because early on, what's Jonathan Davis got? He's got literally nothing. He's uh, all, all these oh, raw thoughts coming yeah. out. But yeah, but now, album nine, he's got a mortgage. He's got kids. Yeah, it's like... He's got, he's got tires got to get rotated, man. Yeah, it's like I feel like he's kind of past the point where the like the idea of somebody coming in and breaking you down, he's like... I think he like is starting to like love himself more mm-hmm. and that I think can be hard when your thing is just like mm-hmm. fucking devastation. Right. Yeah. But he's like, actually, no, <laughs> I don't think. And you're also working with the producer whose hallmark is capturing devastation. And like, that's the thing. That's his nut, right? Like, that's mm-hmm. the thing he loves the most. Right. It's like, I caught the most raw and authentic and yeah. harshest and realist. And yeah, I, he's, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm 46, dude. You know? Like, yeah, that yeah, kind yeah. Of thing. absolutely. Uh, songmeetings.com, uh, Enter the Mad Rocks said, it's more likely about those relationships where you've let down, you're, been, you're let down by friends, family, or a girlfriend slash whatever. Once again, <laughs> girlfriends having to share space with a whatever. You know, anyone who's ever suffered depression and had bad experiences with people 
will know how bad it hurts to hold on to the petty things that others can forget about, and your heart still breaks over those things. The entire Corn 3 album seems to be about trying to please others or being let down and experiencing the negativity from the bad things you suffer in life. Uh, commenter 13, except uh, the I is a 1, Ooh. and one of the E's is a 3, okay. said, I like this new song. Can't wait to hear what the rest of the album sounds like. i already seen people thinking this is another song about Head. Could be, who knows? Or just the shit you put up with loving someone and just being like, fuck it, leave me alone. You can take so much from, I've taken so much from you. It's kind of like Counting on Me Part 2. That person's dealing with something they don't want to talk to us about. <laughs> um, Steve420 Steve said, The emotion in his voice makes this song that much better, especially the crazed slash annoyed slash exhausted laugh he does at the end of it. That is immediately followed by this comment from Element755. Man, not as much as motion as his past albums. <laughs> now it just kind of seems forced out, like he's lost his flair. Listen. I think Korn is a great band. And Davis is amazing. Vocal range is intense, and some of his songs back my heart, back my heart stop in fear, disbelief, whatever. That, okay, but hell, maybe this is just one of the bad songs on the album. He's always had a few bad songs on tracks that just seem loosely thrown together, while other songs were poured into. Nice song though, just not as good as it could have been. Peanut butter bitch smack. Smiley face. Yep. Yeah. Uh, then they said, oh, and the meaning. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. The, the, the title of the website. Okay. Uh, to be honest, this could be directed at Head. You're such a piece of shit, nothing but a hypocrite. I mean, like Davis said this about him before, if I'm not mistaken. Or it could be about hypocrites in general. He just wants them to leave him alone. No one likes fake fuckers bothering you. It's true. Jenny, you yeah. notoriously hate fakes. You hate oh, fake fuckers. posers. Yeah. Phonies. Get them out. Fakes. Wait, are you making a concept record? <laughs> I need to do more. Uh, uh, wannabes? Wannabes and... Uh, uh, naughties. 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 All right. Ooh, that's going to be one hell of a concept record, let mm -hmm. me tell you right now. It's going to be really good. Uh, it's going to be really funny when you're like six tracks in and you're like, I don't think I have anything else to <laughs> say about <laughs> posters. Yeah. Really juiced this. <laughs> yeah. Be yourself. Mm. Just be yourself. Uh, a couple people did post under song... Uh, as song meanings, uh, God Hates Oildale said, honestly, this song is more about kids and people in Oildale and fucking white trash. It is. I grew up there, and I'm not some rich-ass punk either. I did my time in the Dale, mm -hmm. and in this song pretty much sums up what the people in said hellhole are like. It's all the hard asses that think there's something special. I sit with corn. Fuck Oildale. I sit with corn. Wow. I sit with the, I sit with corn. Do I stand? No. No. I, I sit, sit with corn. I'm tired. Uh, I'm, my, with corn. I'm Spartacus. <laughs> I sit with corn. Um the uh Melikeith said there have been some rumors surfacing that this is actually about Loke, John's ex bodyguard. Mm, I guess I guess he was fired last year. Not sure why. If not, then it's just about Oildale, LOL, escaping poverty, Redneckville, things like that. Definitely not about head. There won't be any negative toward head this album, so stop trying to make the connection. Mm. Wow. There won't mm. be any negative toward head. No negative. No toward negative head. toward head. But maybe I mean I guess you you wouldn't, I, I don't know, I can't dig into this, but don't you want a bodyguard to stay near you? I would think. So you, maybe like fired and then leave me alone, but like. Maybe he was, maybe it was a situation where he was like. Too protective? Too protective, yeah. No. Oh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's getting too close. He's doing too good of a job. People are coming up. They want to be like, Jonathan, your lyrics changed <laughs> me. And he's, yeah, he's just face palming yeah. him, you know? And he's yeah. like, no, those are my people. Yeah. Yeah. He wants like a Kevin Costner kind of bodyguard. Yes, yeah, exactly. He mm -hmm. wants a bodyguard who will carry, <laughs> carry him. <laughs> yeah. Carry Jonathan Davis. And like, I mean, there's nothing more likely than Jonathan Davis wanting a bodyguard that has a, a sword so sharp that when he throws a scarf into the air and it lightly <laughs> falls on it, it <laughs> completely slices in half. That's a sharp ass uh, sword. Queen of the Night, you know, not unlike Queen of the Damned, mm. right? Okay. 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 Another okay. concept album coming. Yeah, another one coming. Uh, <laughs> final comment from Skunk64 said, definitely one of the best corn songs ever. Can't stop listening. All right. Nice one, plant. 
Um, <laughs> the wow, uh, wow, the wow, Oildale wow. music video. Jenny, did you get a chance to watch this? I did. Um, this one, uh, I'll just read the Wikipedia description. Uh, it portrays a young boy living in the poverty-stricken town of Oildale, California. Throughout the video, it shows the boy collecting money, riding his bike through the town, and shows glimpses of the other residents while Corn is seen performing in an oil field and in an alley in front of ruins of a burnt house. Also, there is a direct reference to the first album cover art where two men are fighting by a swing set while a little girl watches and is seemingly abducted by the victor. I'm going to say I didn't get that from that fight. That just seemed to be guys fighting next to a girl. Mm -hmm. I didn't see that as a direct one-to-one reference. Um, Maybe I feel it was something they caught in the edit. They're like, I guess, maybe, but I don't know. I didn't really see it. What'd you think? Uh, It it seemed like a pretty classic corn music video. I'm like, Mm -hmm. yep, everything's just a fucking piece of shit. Yeah. Things do look very bad. Looks like oil shit. Bill. Yeah. Looks like shit. Yeah. Definitely like a green tint on everything. Oh, more like a tan tint because oh, it's very dusty. Yeah. Very little, dusty yeah. in oil day. Sepia. Little, yeah. Yeah. little yeah. sepia tone. Uh, well, let's keep it going. Jenny, what do we got up next? Up next, we got Papa Pill. So the first thing I want to say is, well, look at this. <laughs> yeah. Look at this. <laughs> look, look at, at this. this. Uh, I am loving the JD vocals here because he is, he clearly sounds like Russ Robinson is on his fucking back. Like, just like, I need you to be too much. I need everything at 11. He's cranked up. This, well, look at this is too much. And it makes me laugh. And I kind of, I kind of love it. I kind of love it. Jenny? Yeah, I like the riff on this song a lot. It's very fun. I also like his look at this. This feels a bit more like he means it than the first song to me. Um, Obviously, there's been like lots of struggles with addiction for him and in his like immediate vicinity. So, um, and like you know, struggles with like mental health. And if you're in a place where you're like, all right, we got to get back to like whatever, like trying to figure out who you are, it probably is just like a struggle he's having. So, uh, yeah, I liked it, I was into it, Mm, Matt. In my complete guess, I feel. Like Ross is driving Jonathan to give him all the emotion. Mm -hmm. And I feel like the addiction part is an easier tap for Jonathan to get into. So it comes across a lot more viscerally. Whereas if you go to therapy and you have age, some of the childhood trauma and other trauma that you can have in your life, some you find new ways to deal with those and you start to put some of that to bed and it kind of feels like that's wow I'm froggy one second <coughs> well look at this look at this <laughs> I'm emotional now i if you if you go to therapy and you're working on these things that you don't want to be holding you down for the rest of your life and you've had that much time I, I feel like those things are harder to tap into because you put them to rest or yeah. you you start letting a huge part of letting those things go. Mm-hmm. So it's so like, you know, when you were 18 and you were dealing with abuse, I need that energy. It's like, I'm not 18 and dealing with abuse that way anymore. I'm I'm older and I now know a lot more ways to handle that, that I don't. I just me as a person, I don't want to go back there, you mm-hmm. know. So like, but the addiction part is like that's every fucking day. I'm I'm gonna be dealing with that from people that I know in recovery. They say that it was like, oh, this isn't just a uh, I'm good thing. This is like a literally every fucking day thing. Mm-hmm. So I, his visceralness very much comes through. I think this is a classic corn song. Mm-hmm. There we go. Yeah, I put in my notes that this rips, this rules. I'm a fan. Actually, I like this one better than Oildale. Yeah. Um, I think. I mean, at the same time though, this isn't an intro type of song. Like you no. wouldn't you wouldn't open with an album like yeah. But I yeah, I like this one. Uh, SongMeanings.com. Mella Keith said, "Shouldn't have to dig far for the meaning here. It's about drug addiction." Well, look at this. Uh, everybody's hopping on that. Um, just Cat said, this is definitely one of my favorite songs for the new album. Uh, I'm just reading as she wrote it. Is it just me, or is the song itself a bit addictive? Since Ooh. I bought the album, I have listened to it at least once every day, LOL. Wow. Mm. 
Why are we laughing out loud? And we've listened to it every, <laughs> every oh, day. This is hilarious, by the way. I've listened to it every day. Once a day. Once a day. Mm-hmm. Oh, like a like an addict. Once a day, you listen to Papa Pill. Don't mm-hmm. interrupt. Don't interrupt, mommy. It's Papa Pill time. <laughs> She's listening to Papa Pill. <laughs> Ogilvy, take me away. Well, look at this. Calgon, take me away. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Um, Enter the Madrox came back. Said uh, they said song meaning. Said not about addiction. More about needing the medication for depression. Otherwise, things get on top of him again. He's feeling things crawl on me. Negative thoughts. So he needs his fix of antidepressants to stop that and be normal as it were. Hard to explain to someone who might not have been on them, but this is definitely an ode to his antidepression meds. Mm-hmm. Okay. okay. All right. It's another. It's another take. Definitely a take. It's another take. And might be right. We don't know. We don't know. We are not his family. We're mm-hmm. not his family. We don't know. All right, Jenny, what we got up next? Up next, up next, we have Fear is a Place to Live. Very jaunty. Very jaunty. Real snake arm vibes on the chorus there. Um, I really felt like this was one where I wanted bigger sounding drums, but this is a classic ross drums situation like this is how he makes his drum sound i would have liked him bigger but i like the production of the guitars and the bass very crisp uh, on headphones you could hear every snap every click mm. uh, you know just it's just clunking away um at 220 you get a part that i wrote in my notes as fake ass wow maybe i don't need to do my phonies mm. concept album i think anymore. they got him i think they got him right think there we're covered <laughs> screaming <laughs> fake Yes. That's all you need. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Jenny, how'd you feel about this one? Uh, I liked it. I thought it was jaunty. I thought it was fun. Um, you know, I mean, it uh, again, it seemed like a little more authentic to like what he actually is dealing with. Because at this point, mm-hmm. they're a huge band kind of in like a weird state. Because like this like whole revival of being like, actually, corn is good. It isn't like happening. It's not happening for a while. No. And so he probably is just like surrounded by fucking hangers on. Sick Can't pants. tell mm-hmm. like who is actually your friend, who like everybody wants something from you. So that's got to be like fucking shitty. Yeah. It fucking sucks. Yeah. Sucks. Dude. Sounds like it would suck. Bums me out. Yeah, man. Yeah. I'm not. Um, I don't like this one. And I think the reason I don't like it is it. I like the way it sounds, and it's definitely a corn song, but this is one of those corn songs that's like washes over me. Mm. I almost feel like Jonathan Davis hit the Jonathan Davis button. Mm. And it's like, hey, and there you go. That's uh that's uh John I yeah, I just don't Yeah, I mean we didn't get to the part of it where he says, I always get fucked in the end five times in a row. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. that, that probably ramps it up. It does ramp it up a little bit. Yeah, he talks about fake ass people surround me, digging their claws right in me. They're always nice to begin with, but I always get fucked in the end. There we wow, go. there it is. Songmeanings.com. Mel Keith said again, pretty simple meaning here. People putting on a front and acting all nice when they aren't. Usually they have a motive to take advantage of someone. John, in this case. Mm. Gothic Hobbit said, awesome riff on the chorus. Corn are back with a bang. Ooh. Okay. And then this one, um, I'll just tell you that I read this. I was doing these notes late at night. And at the end of this comment, I I laughed for five minutes straight. I couldn't. I was uncontrollable. I couldn't stop laughing. I had to stop what I was doing. Wow. Here's the, this is from a commenter. uh, I think this is B.B. Ibanez or B.B. B.B. Inez. Mella Keith is right. People using other to fight whatever act they expect to do. So while you fight for them, they are stabbing to get all the glory or dot, dot, dot. You earn from fighting for them. It's simple, but so true. Parentheses. Sorry for bad selling, spelling sentence structure. Wow. <laughs> Sorry for the whole thing. Like they, hey. they put that out. They were like, this is all trouble. I'm not going back. Sorry about all this. Yeah. It's Good like- for them. Yeah, figure it out. This is a fun. free website. It's like. a hey, we're fine. Everybody's fine. Uh, it's fine. Okay. Up next, Jenny, what do we got? Move on. So this is an interesting one because you can really feel them like merging and trying to make this is like this feels like them. All right, let's make a song that would go on Life is Peachy. Let's make a song that would go on 
the first album that seems like these these weird sort of spindly creepy voice verses he wasn't doing this type of thing on follow the leader he wasn't doing this on untouchables Mm. you know this is this is much more back yeah this this feels like a really push for a throwback but the chorus feels like a modern day corn chorus and also feels like a ross's rules like nail the chorus like he kind of let i think he let him slide on those verses is like if you give me the chorus i'll let you slide on those verses <laughs> you know? uh i like the grid of ross's production here uh i wrote riff it up monkey um so i thought this and it has a strong finale where he's yelling what the fuck do you want from me so I like this one. I thought this one was strong. Jenny? Uh, yeah, I like this one. It is like getting to a point where we're like going into the like, we're in the corn zone. Mm. That's fine. It's, the songs sound different, but there's a sameness to it for me that I'm like, all right. Like I, and I do like this record, um, but I feel like it can be hard to go like, the idea of going back to where you were mm-hmm. it's like we've been here are we what the the content definitely feels different to a degree like the the actual content of the songs but i don't know i don't know it's losing me a little matt i didn't like it and mm. <clears throat> and the reason why isn't um for the reasons of me not liking the original corn stuff right where i was just adamantly against the band now having kind of grown through the six albums um listening to a lot more new metal and having a lot more respect for corn and what they do i miss head very much in this mix something is totally missing and I'm uh, seven strings, man. You are missing is, seven uh, strings. But it is Brian's contribution to the mix. Um, there's an interesting feeling of the cure in this one. Like the cure influence comes through a lot more clearly in this song than ever before. But there is, there is a, it is hollow to me. And I think that it's vitamin head that's missing mm. Mm. vitamin head <laughs> take that out of context yeah hey, vitamin head hey. <laughs> i'm looking for a gruel you know i'm looking for my vitamin head looking you know what i vitamin mean head. got hey. my full panels back and i'm deficient <laughs> vitamin head dangerously so <laughs> yes, I, that's free as well it's also free all of this is free. oh this, this is, is free, free baby so we might be selling out but we oh, still this give is, a lot away that's right uh songmeetings.com commenter go no mo devil said could this song be about all the bitches out there that said corn lost their power and blah 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 I think so. Blah, blah, blah. Enter uh, Madrox responded. Doesn't seem to be about people claiming anything. If anything, it's another one about not being able to deal with the constant depression and the thoughts and stresses that brings, which is the overall theme of the album. John wants to move on from the things that still make him feel down from childhood and beyond, but his mental state because of depression stops him from doing that. This guy rolls in, says, you're wrong. And then songmeanings.coms him. Yeah. Gives him a full on song meanings in the response. Enter the Madrox. He's in the zone. Wow. wow Don't wow, fuck wow. with that one. Wow, wow. Um, then uh, just pretending, I should say X, just X, pretending X said, sounds like a big whore to me. Sweet song. Hey, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Go. Okay. Go. Um, yeah. And then Jefferson Four posted this on November 29th, 2022. Uh, my interpretation as a shy person is about doing everyone's will and letting your need, letting your needs behind, leaving your needs behind. Okay. Something, sometimes we try to please others to feel like we belong to something. And in the end, we just receive despise instead. Okay. Oh. Being everybody's whore brings me that idea. I was trying to please everybody to fit, but through it and now I'm going to please me. Fuck everybody's expectations. I'm going to be myself and not being everybody's whore and trying to please them all the time to feel accepted. Good for you, Jefferson Ford. Wow. Okay, I have a question. Yeah, yeah. This sort of brings me back to the people pleaser thing. Mm-hmm. Ooh. And this is like a, a theme that has come up, and I think I'm sensitive to it because I find myself 
questioning and like investigating some feelings that I have about some things personally, but like, uh, are, are people making these decisions based on what like somebody has told them they want, or is it your interpretation of what you think somebody wants from you and then you do it and then you get mad? Oh, that's a, because it's like, are you just actually like this whole like I'm a people pleaser, uh, I'm an empath, I'm whatever. Like, who's ask who's asking you to do this shit? Because like, there's some stuff that like I have done for people that I'm like, I did this for you, and I feel resentful because I don't feel like you appreciate it enough. Yeah. But did they ever ask me to do that? Actually, no. Like, I made that decision, and so like, I have to. I have to figure out how to like say what I need, but making it about the other person and being like, I tried to please you and you didn't appreciate it. So fuck you. I'm doing me now. Like on the others, like when I read that, I'm like, does this other person have like, I'm sure there are people who are like, you must please me, fit my expectations, fit my mold. But right. I don't, I don't know so much about this dynamic. I, am I like mean? I don't. No, I don't, I don't think, think you're wrong. mean. I also think it's. Su- I think it's very complicated, and obviously none of us are psychologists here. But like, in my not own, yet in my <laughs> own life, and I, I never. I try not to talk about my dad a lot, um, but very narcissistic, mm. Mm. and generally those people take advantage of people with no boundaries, and when they have no boundaries, like the things and they kind of status up on you because everything is about them, then this becomes a pleasing role to that person, whether or not they want to do it or not. It's usually because they don't have the boundaries and they're looking for something to fill a hole inside of them. Yeah. That that's where it's like, Oh, well now we've got almost like a perpetuating engine of it's never going to be good enough for this person. Cause they're completely fucking broken and they think what's going to fix them is plugging that hole. And yeah. that's never going to fucking happen. And when they break apart from each other, you still got a person out there who unfortunately doesn't have the ability to create any boundaries looking for another person of which they can. Well, I have a piece here in my hand. Maybe this piece will complete you. And it's like, oh, you're never going to be you until you change that relationship with yourself that you're not really ever going to be able to add a piece to a person that's going to complete them mentally. I don't think that there's a lot of progress that can be made. So Yeah. mm. Yeah, that's fair. But then I also know as somebody who has said things along those lines, that it's much more of me trying to call it out as like, oh, this is what I do. I'm a people pleaser, which means I have no boundaries and I don't know how to say no to you. Um, So please don't take advantage of that. But it really sets me up to... I'm going to get fully taken advantage by you because I have no boundaries to say like, yeah, I don't dig on that shit. Or I'm going to take a look at like what I think you need or I perceive that you need. And I'm going to do that for you because I think that's what's going to give me all of, all the points that I need. And it's like, oh, oh, it didn't. And I feel fucking worse. And now I'm angry at you because you didn't notice that I did this. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's 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 a mess. And it usually comes from. Not having the boundaries to be able to say, like, you know what? I need to uh, people please this guy first. I really yeah. got to take care of this guy. Right. I, I feel you. I have a lot of that dynamic, like, with, like, my, like, mom and stuff, you know? So, like, when you brought it up like that, like, yeah, I get it. I get it. Like, it, it does make sense to me. I think sometimes it's maybe the theme of this album, too, a little bit. It's, like, at what point in your life you have to figure it out? you have to start figuring it out. Right. And like, I, obviously we talk about like real life things all the time, but right. when I hear this kind of shit, I am just like, you, you know, this about you. Right. It's so like, you got to You got to work on it. You got to try. I didn't think it was going to get this heavy this early, but it is <laughs> like the name of the fucking albums. Remember who you are, remember. which is, which is a thing that people will use a, when you go back to your hometown and oh, you yeah. go back to the family reunion and you go, hey, you didn't get too big for us. Remember who you are. You came from blah, blah, blah place. And you, you are blah, 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 blah. And it's like, yeah, but I also left this place and I've got a whole bunch of other things. Yeah, that's a really wild. Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, remember who you are. So go back to who that was. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, no, I can't. It's in fucking possible. Like, 
yeah, I remember who I was, but that isn't who I am. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, if I can't, uh, boy, if I can't, sorry, buddy, if I can't evolve, then what the fuck are we doing? Am I still 12, scared out of my fucking mind that I'm going to get hit? Mm-hmm. You know, like, that's not great. I don't want that feeling for the rest of my life. Like, can't we, can't I? Yes, that's who I was, but is that who I am now? Yeah. And then I go back to the guy, and now I'm talking his corn. They go back to the person that broke him, really. They go back. It's like, I went back to coach. I went back to the guy who was able to hone the, the weapon of my anger and my angst and my fears and capture it all. And ever since that moment to this moment now is because of those moments. And it's like, but I'm not that fucking guy anymore. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it really does feel like, I mean, especially what Jonathan Davis said about this, is like they went back, they remembered who they were and who they are, and in the process realized that they're not those people anymore, and they can't do this with Ross anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, mm-hmm. it is worth mentioning that Ross... Ross's mom is like this self help person oh my who's gosh, been very accused of cultiness mm. multiple times. So mm. like I want and it is a lot of that like internal like, is it true? Is it like mm-hmm. just you have everything you need? I don't know. It's so it seems like it's all fucked up, just like everything else. Mm. Byron Katie. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah. Uh, the other thing to keep in mind, you brought up empaths, is that everyone I've ever met in my life who's described themselves has an empath has a group chat about them that they don't know about. <laughs> okay. I'm just going to wow. say that. Yeah. Right. There's a real back channel. On yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Anybody who's like, I'm there. an empath. I'm like, girl, then why can't you read the room? <laughs> Come on. Mm, yeah. Interesting. Uh, yeah. As the, an empath. <laughs> oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Jenny. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I get it. It's like, you know, people have a lot of feelings and it's hard to like sort through things. Definitely. And, yeah. Mm-hmm. Hey, who amongst us? Who amongst us? And Matt, I thank you for your vulnerability. Thank you. Because I think I was thinking of it in a very specific way that did not account for probably many in most people's experiences. So thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks Thanks for giving me a safe space. Hey, no problem. <laughs> All right. Now I'm just, I'm laughing because I'm looking at like, we're listening to this corn record. And once again, <laughs> here we go. Here we, here go. we go. Here we go. Uh, Jenny, what do we got next? Lead the parade. I wanted to uh, read a quote from, uh, from Ray where he said, uh, we're not in a giant comfy recording studio that we're used to. We try not to be too overproduced and really try to capture our passions. Pretty much what this whole record's about. There's nothing like, let's try and play our instruments perfectly. It's much more, let's just rock this. (laughs) There we go. I just wanted to bring that one back. Uh, For this song, uh, you know, I brought it up before. My dad once referred to a Deftone song as sounding like someone threw a drum set down a staircase. This is a drum set down a staircase kind of song. Stick the chorus. Sticks the chorus. The pedal on that swirly guitar sound at the top. I'm like, ooh, okay. Then he turns the pedal off. And I was like, I need you to turn that pedal back on, please. Uh, Yeah, that's because we miss Brian Head Welch. Mm -hmm. (sighs) We miss it. Because we miss texture. Vitamin head. Vitamin head. (laughs) Vitamin head. We need texture, though. Like, texture is missing. Um. Yeah, the uh, the pre-chorus here. I need to make a decision. I need to make it right. I need to lead the parade, and this shit will fucking take my life. I don't know. I, I this 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 one was just. I was like, you know what? Not a great corn song. Not not one of their not one of their highlights. Kind of a low light, Jenny. Yeah, I would agree. Not a great song. Although, like, I guess maybe I'm like, I'm probably projecting just like every person in songmeetings.com projects their shit onto it. It's like, mm-hmm. I I was thinking about like the enormity of the responsibility that he has at this point and the like, this is still new metal's a joke time. Like he's got to put food on his family. Absolutely. But mm-hmm. then there's like the whole, whatever the whole machine is that's like riding on this and he's the face of that. Corn ink. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And like, that's that level of like pressure and having to make decisions and like i don't know i mean that's the song does suck but i <laughs> like what he's saying i'm like damn like that that feels that feels like a 
fucking lot of pressure. And is he sober at this point? I What's believe, his sobriety I believe at this point he is sober, but he is still being medicated by medical professionals because okay. he does talk about in the noisy rank my records thing that around around i want to see the 2013 era he was getting off of okay. the stuff he had been prescribed he's like at a certain point you had to have to wean yourself off of it so he is on medication but he is ostensibly sober he's not on okay. yeah he's not anything he's not prescribed yeah i mean that's also like having that level of responsibility your the things that you use to kind of like numb all that shit out, like mm-hmm. no longer existing. I don't, I'm definitely projecting. Obviously I do not have like an entire machine uh, or p- anything like rel- Socia Inc. Socia Inc. Uh, no, but I mean like it's fucking stressful mm, to be yeah. responsible for yeah. providing for people and mm-hmm. you take on that responsibility. And then like, you know, I was telling you guys, it's been almost four years since I've had anything to drink and mm-hmm. it's like, you know, sometimes it's nice to just like not fucking think. Um, yeah. <laughs> and it's hard to do that yeah. Yeah. when you're raw dog in reality. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. yeah. So anyway, what I'm saying is yeah. Jonathan Davis and I are exactly the same. I thought so. Like, yeah. That's what I know. heard. Um, yeah. We're the same. Um, that's it. Deal with it. Deal uh, with it. Posers. Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, I'll just close this with letting you know that this song was performed live zero times. Yeah. Never uh, made the set. Not a surprise. Not a surprise. Well, <laughs> you know, don't uh, don't count me out. I'll perform it. Ooh. <laughs> Just kidding. I never will. <laughs> is this a Jenny original? No, this is a corn song even corn doesn't fucking do. <laughs> yeah. Lead the parade. <laughs> maybe not one of the... Yeah, not the strongest not. in the catalog. Maybe not. Just to put that in the context, they've done daddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They don't do let they don't do lead the parade. Mm-hmm. All right. All right. It's the second single from the album. Jenny, what do we got? We got Let the Guilt Go. Jenny, we'll start with you. Thoughts on Let the Guilt Go. Uh, I like Let the Guilt Go. Um, I tell you one thing which leads to another thing made me laugh mm. every single time when it was like, I'm just saying what comes to mind. I was yeah. like, I can hear that. <laughs> yeah. um, when I actually read the lyrics and have them in front of me, this is my first time doing that. It, it, it doesn't seem quite as silly. It makes sense in the context. But then I backtrack, which leads to hurt feelings and my brain spins out. Like it's obviously just like when an argument just spirals out yeah Mm -hmm. that's tough um makes sense uh but just listening to it i was like oh yeah i tell you one thing leads to another thing like are are, yeah all right (laughs) it's it's incredibly direct like yeah the subtext this is gone it's it's all text and honestly i found this to be one of the most relatable corn choruses of like all of corn like i was like who has not been here who yeah. has not? Anyone's going to listen, and I think it's the same reaction. You first you hear it and you go, a little on the nose, and then you'll like the second time the chorus comes around, you're like, who hasn't been there, man? Oh <laughs> yeah. yeah. You, you start rehashing things. Like, and, yeah. uh, like I should have said, let's stop. Let's stop right now. Yep. I think we should stop. Let's take a minute. But who does that? Yeah. Right. No, right. you don't. You just keep barreling. <laughs> you keep barreling through. You're like, I can convince this person. Yeah. And then the next thing you know, one thing. Leads, leads to, to another, another thing. Then I backtrack and it leads to hurt feelings. Exactly. My brain spins off fucking everything. When this happens, you can't break your own. There you go. Uh, Matt, let the guilt go. No, this this is great. Uh, great corn right in the pocket. Great chorus. Um, I miss Brian, but not as much on this one. Mm-hmm. Classic corn sound. They're doing the damn thing. Have mm-hmm. they played this live? I have to say, probably when this album came out, maybe in that cycle, but I don't think I've, they've played it much since. Uh, I will look that up in a moment. Um, I wrote my notes that this is a crunchy bop, Corn 101. It's what you want. Um, almost all the comments are about how the lyrics are wrong. So a lot of like, fix right. the lyrics. Um, Who do we go to? Clutching pearls. Yeah. Oh, uh, but Mel Keith rolled in to say, best song on the album, parentheses, in my opinion. Mm. Yeah, that Mel, makes sense. I mean, I'm, I was like, Mel Keith, I know you do not represent the company you work for. But I, I, I believe you, sir. But I appreciate the clarity. Yeah. Um, the Let the Guilt Go music video. Jenny, 
This I, is a <laughs> this is a crop circle alien situation. We got a crop circle that simply reads corn. Yeah, big fans. <laughs> big fans. Oh, not just corn. This is corn three. Oh, <laughs> these aliens are like we're on the album cycle. All right. Yeah, we've been here a while. We know it's album number nine, corn three. Zoop. Yeah, exactly. Um, it's funny, like uh, every night when we go to bed, uh, I read and Mitch watches Unexplained in bed. So like I get a lot of this like alien crop circle stuff. So mm-hmm. when I watch this video, I felt, mm. you know, like it was about bedtime. Mm. Uh, good video, though. Good video. Um, there is a, an entire crop circle corn concert. That's that what a, I was thinking. Is that 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 yeah that accompanies? So they cut some of that into the video, but there's an entire corn crop circle concert. Initially, Jenny and I had talked about watching this concert, um, but we're busy bees. Buzz, 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 uh, buzz, buzz, buzz. There was not time to buzz, watch buzz, these that. balls bald. Yeah, That's exactly. Funny. It was entirely too long. But we did have time to watch this music video, and I do want to just talk about. Um, that on the one hand, you do have the aliens, the crop circle, corn performing in the crop circle. All looks great. You also have a plot. Mm. And that plot, I will just read from the Wikipedia. A group of students are studying. They are approached and taunted by a couple of college football bullies before being left alone. (laughs) That night, the three students are driving by one of the crop fields when they spot a bright light coming from the sky. One of the passengers, a girl, leaves the vehicle and enters the bright light. She is momentarily picked up off the ground by the light before being dropped back to Earth moments later. Now, they leave this out that these are not just any type of girls, Matt. They are... Uh, Strippers? They're hotties. They're hotties. Oh, okay. They're hotties okay. Matt, stripping <laughs> <laughs> vitamin head over here, right? Yeah. Well, I was going for sexy. I was like, yeah. are they... Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, that's completely reasonable. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. It's okay, Matt. <laughs> I, I thought you were... Wow. <laughs> Matt's like stripper. Uh, Stri- Matt... <laughs> I'm so horny, guys. <laughs> that's all right. I'm sorry. Honk. Honk, honk, honk. Honk away, Matt. Uh, the next... <laughs> <laughs> The next day, the girl arrives at school dressed much more provocatively, yeah, which attracts the attention of the bullies from the day before, um, who were described earlier as college bullies. These people are all clearly in a high school. Um, they are all... bully. If you're a fucking bully in college, <laughs> get your shit together. <laughs> there are no bullies in college. It's n- what? That's the thing. Everyone in this video is 30 years old, dressed like they're supposed to be in 10th yeah. grade. Yeah, yeah. Um, but hello, fellow kids. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's weird. Yeah. Um so yeah, uh so yeah, she returns to school. She's been possessed by aliens, so now she dresses hot. Uh in class, the girl attracts the attention of one of the bullies who fails to notice her testing her newly acquired telekinesis on a pencil, which she then launches into a picture of the very same bully. A following night, the two travel to a makeout spot where the bully tries to force himself upon the girl. A bright flash of light explodes from within the car. And the video cuts to the girl throwing her head back, the boy having exploded into white smoke. The girl leaves the car and walks off. (laughs) Smoke. Yeah. He exploded into... (laughs) He is 100% So you're telling me that all women need to do to not be raped is to be possessed by aliens? That's it. 100%. Then you have these superpowers, and then you just vaporize your attackers. Okay. To a 100% new CD. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Well, if you're listening, now you know. Yeah. Uh, So, yeah, that was um, just one of those ones where I was just like, they they put it on paper, they're like, yeah, there's like a bullying situation, aliens possess vengeance, and Korn was like, we love it, great. And then the casting director's like, no one under 32. <laughs> Please. <Right. laughs> uh, um, oh, Let the Guilt Go, Matt. You had the question uh, how often that is played. So Let the Guilt Go has been played 57 times. There you mm-hmm. go. Um, and let's see. That sounds like a cycle. The last time it was played was at the Alamo Dome. <laughs> At the end. Uh, on February 9th, 2011. So, yeah, it only made it through the end of this album cycle wow. and has not been brought back since then. I see. Yesterday, I was told that there's a CVS right next door to the Alamo, and that was one of the funniest things anybody's ever told me. <laughs> that is truly the CVS <laughs> at the end wow. of the world. Yeah. Is, yeah. They're like, you go to the Alamo, you think it's going to be big, but 
it's kind of small. And there's a CVS right next to it. I was like, damn. America. That's, that's, uh, that's, fucking, listen, that's exactly right. Guy, listen, CVS bought that little plot of land and they were like, you tell me I can't build here? Mm-hmm. You tell me you can't get a Schick razor next to the Alamo? That's right. Let me tell you, you're at the Alamo and you need some deodorant? Because mm. you're gonna. You're gonna. I you're... get my riddle in from the Alamo. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to your pharmacy. I'm going to the Alamo. Uh, uh, which, which pharmacy Which pharmacy am I sending it to? You're going to have to put it on horseback. <laughs> it's going to the Alamo. It's a real pony express. Yeah. I need you to just tape that pill jar to the back of that horse. Slap its yeah! ass. <laughs> yeah. That's right. That's uh, right. Godspeed, swift foot. That's why there is an ADHD medication shortage. Because it's... Oh. It's on some random yeah. horse somewhere. <laughs> it's just all on these horses. Oh, well, confused it's horses hard. in cities. Yeah. Sea Biscuit, hurry up. <laughs> it's the only horse name. Black Beauty, where are you? What other horses are there? Uh, Mr. Ed. Mr. Ed. He wouldn't let me down. <laughs> he wouldn't let I'm you sorry. down. He wouldn't. All right, everybody. What's up next? The past. Of course. <laughs> yes, it is. Wow. <laughs> Let's unpack that. As Matt, you like to say that. Let's yeah, unpack. Let's unpack, let's unpack that. Let's un- let's open this suitcase up and just see what's inside. Let's see what's inside. We got some socks. We got some shoes. Mm. We got some underpants. Got some toiletries. We also have some interesting ass lyrics. Um, uh, we have some love without affection. Love without affection. Is hate without the pain. What? What? What does that mean? So is that like getting... I would think that love without affection would be incredibly painful. <laughs> like... Hmm. Love with... Uh, yeah. It's, it, it, it feels a little hat on a hat. Like love without affection? No, we'll stop you right there. <laughs> right. Like They're already tough. Then it's not... Love without affection is hate without the pain hate without the pain so maybe it's just saying like it's not it doesn't it's exist. nothing oh yeah oh. maybe that's it mm. Ooh. Wow. Ooh. shit hey just add crack- me to the genius list <laughs> 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 jenny crack the code i'm going to songmeetings.com right now <laughs> uh you you might I, this song i gotta say it felt like it was full of effort felt like they everybody worked on this song super hard big and effort y- and yet it's like incredibly minor like yeah like it's like it's like you could feel like you can hear Ross at the top. He's like, "We're doing it, we're doing it." And everyone's like, "Really? Like we're gonna tap the symbols here? We're gonna do this?" And God, and, and and then at the end of the day, mm, it's fine. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. You know, we just yeah, which uh, is shitty, right? That's still like I hate being like it's fine. But the, you know what? That's that is the risk when you create art and you put it out into the world. Okay, it's, it's yours till you release it. And then someone's going to have a take on it. Someone's got an opinion on it. Someone's going to have some feelings on it. And you could put all the effort in the world on it. And as we all know, all of the like, oh, man, he worked on this album for 16 years and it stinks. Or, oh, he worked on this album for two weeks and it stinks. Like, it doesn't well, matter. I, I always don't... think about that Dre record that it w- has been cooking ever since. And like he played it for some people and they're all like, you can never release this. <laughs> <laughs> delete the tapes. Yeah, they brought in Herzog and uh, wow. <laughs> you know wow. Lars Dad. <laughs> delete this. Delete the tapes. Um, there is uh, one comment on songmeetings.com. It's from uh, uh, <laughs> I'm not going to tell you the name, uh, but it's uh, it's under uh, my interpretation. Uh, I'll tell you the name after we read it. I think this song is about being haunted, capital H, by something in your past and how we want to leave it behind, but someone tries to bring it back, regardless if you want it or not. Interesting comment. What's your name? Oh, Haunted Knight. Oh. <laughs> oh. oh. <laughs> he's, he's, I, I, I would love to go through and all of his comments are about like, this song's about being haunted. At night. <laughs> at night. That's that's what makes it different. It's mm. at night. Oh, I'm sorry, guys. It's night with a K. It's a night. Like oh, a, yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's, oh, it's okay. a haunted night. I see. I see. Haunted night. Uh, yes. Um, I th- I think we're ready for the next one. Up next, we got Never Around. And I want to so let me guess. Let me guess. This is the one he had to scream sing to his ex-wife. 
so there is no th- there's discussion in the comments on what song it is um and i don't believe it's this one um i think it's further down in the comments on a different song that they say what song it is i think it's the next one maybe um Never around seems. Oh no! It's the next song. Is the next the next according to the comments and song meanings, the next song is the one that he had to sing at his wife. Um. So this one, uh, I don't know what it is, but in in the same way, Jenny, when you pointed out the how it sounded funny, is like you say one thing and then I say something, and like, when you listen to it out of like when you're not listening close, it just sounds funny. When he's like. Definitely something's going on. Yeah. <laughs> that was like, okay, first pass, first thought, best thought. Okay. <laughs> Definitely something's going on. All right. Okay. I will say that, that he sounds incredibly paranoid on this song and on most of the album, but it really comes through on this one. Um, I think the guitars sound cool as hell on this song. Um, I just wish that like, they, they give you that riff, they tease you with the riff up top. And you're like, oh, yeah, give me give me that fucking riff. And then when it comes in, you're like, oh. And then they drop it out. And I'm like, nah, you just should have kept it. I don't know why. Just should have kept it. Yeah. Kept it longer. Kept it, you know, because when it comes back, it's awesome. Um, at the end, at 255, it just sounds like they're just hitting the guitar with stuff. It doesn't even sound like it's trying to be a riff. It just sounds like very. Uh, so, I, I mean, I like this one fine. Um, I did want to note about this album. We didn't talk about it. Um, it debuted at number two. On the Billboard 200, when it came out, sold 63,000 copies first week, but is the first Corn album at that time to not go gold or platinum. Oh, wow. Wow, wow. Yeah. Um, Jenny, thoughts on Never Around? It was fine. Mm-hmm. Uh, at this point, I'm kind of like, all right, we got another Corn record here. Mm-hmm. So, hey, <laughs> here we go. <laughs> we do. Uh, any other thoughts, Matt? I'm never around. No, not necessarily any new thoughts. I, I, my hat is being fucking tipped to Monkey though. Like he is chugging on this yeah. record. Mm-hmm. Like he, he is. This might be peak powers, Monkey. I don't know. Like he's killing it on this record. Well, he said, you know, during the entire time that Head was not in the band, he's like, I missed my creative partner. He was the guy I bounced ideas off, and he had stuff, and we can collaborate. And he's like. He was, yeah, he wasn't there. And so it was just making all the records without him were just, was an incredibly, like, much more stressful process. Yeah. And that he said, like, and then I think, you know, when we eventually get there, when Head came back for Paradigm Shift, like, the, everyone said, like, the vibe was immediately better. Head's back. They're good. Like, JD, I guess, when I'm, like, some sort of, oh, that was when JD was, like, detoxing from his, um, the prescription from the pills. prescription pills and he said i came back and they had just written so much and just you could just tell like he was back monkey had been was, waiting was for back. him to come back yeah and you know and, and you know not to spoil alert but when you get to the since heads come back you know quality level up there we go so uh yeah all right how are we respectful of our time is this album this album now yeah, this one <laughs> this one that we're listening to <laughs> yep. uh it's 44 minutes and 37 seconds it's right there right there right in the pocket all right up next we got are you ready to live i hope so Mm. this one's interesting because it feels like there was a version of this song that was just a straight ahead ripper and then jonathan davis was like i gotta do some more creepy voice stuff i got i got more i'm just feeling creepy wild was it jonathan davis or was it the man behind the boards (sighs) tough to say Either way, this song feels like it's in its own way. I feel like you there's a version of this song that's just a straight ahead ripper that follows that riff right down down the middle. And uh, as it stands, it's just okay because of yeah, there's just too much yeah. I don't know, just yeah, it just gets lost. It gets lost in the middle there. Jenny? Yeah, I agree. Like, I don't know what we're doing here. I mean, I do know what we're doing here, and it's fine, and mm-hmm. I like it yeah. well enough, but it just feels lost a little yeah. bit. Mm. Uh, interesting comment on songmeanings.com from Duwam, who said, there's definitely more to this song. Watching the Crop Circle performance, John actually breaks down at the end of the song, throws the mic, and you hear him saying, fucking hate that song. <laughs> here you go. Uh, and then uh, Cornhead. 
said. Also, if you look, too, Monkey is looking at him when he's crying. I never noticed any of it until I read your comment. Then I had to look. Then again, we know John can get real emotional when it comes to a lot of corn songs. There you go. They're mm-hmm. emotional songs. Well, I just reread that Billboard article that came out around the time this album came out uh-huh. where Jonathan Davids said making this album was pure torture and hell. Mm. Um, love the end result, but a real fucking nightmare. And then goes on to describe that Ross Robinson put him through the fucking ringer mm. and he was not doing well psychologically. Uh, definitely was in a place of despair. His therapist got very involved. Wow. Um, Ooh. Yeah, it's bad fucking news. Like, so now he's singing this song to his wife if this is the one that he did it. Yeah. And now he's like, I'm going to go creepy. Is I don't know. Like, this is, there's a lot, a lot going on here. You know what, though? I would say it also would be weird to have to sing any song in front of somebody one to one that even if it had nothing to do with them. Dude, sing, if you're not in a theatrical presentation, yeah. singing a song to somebody is the most awkward thing in the whole entire world. Yeah. I mean, Jenny, when you and Mitch started dating, I mean, you tried to sing at him, and he was just like, "Jenny, please don't." Right? Yeah, no, yeah. I was constantly trying to. You were constantly trying to him. sing. No. What, what, what were, what were some of your go-to songs that you tried to sing at Mitch? Um, you know, Islands in the Stream, Big Time, Big, big time, time, Big Time, um, mm-hmm. Blue, 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, a, that's a good uh, one. Blue, Joni Mitchell. Oh yeah, also yeah. Yeah. any Great song one. that had like Blue in it. Okay, yeah. so Third Eye Blind, second album, Blue. You sang those songs. Yep, that song I know really well. Then she also did Hygiera. Um, yeah, there were a lot of songs. Mm, right. And he just was like, please stop. I don't mm-hmm. need this. Yeah. No, no. Yeah. All right. Okay. One day, though. You one know. day. One day. We're, we're working up to it. You know? Good, 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 good. Um, so this is the last song on the traditional normal version of the album. The, the traditional album. The yeah. traditional oh, okay. album. There's also a deluxe version that throws in a couple live tracks and also has two bonus tracks. Jenny, did you get a chance to listen to these? I did. Okay. Did you think any of them were better than or as good as anything on the album? I thought Trapped Under the Stairs. Underneath the Stairs. Underneath the Stairs, yeah. I'm just shortening it up because it's my family. Um, I like that one better than many of the album tracks. Okay. How about you? Uh, People Pleaser. Yeah. I thought was actually (laughs) kind of incredible. Yeah. And honestly... I'm a little surprised that these two songs are not part of the normal album. People Please Your Feels like a much more natural end to the album. Yeah. And also, one of these songs actually says, remember who you are in it. Oh. So I'm like, why would you leave this off? I don't know. Mm. You know, I, I think it's very funny to make an album and say it's about people pleasing and then leave off People Pleaser. <laughs> right. To the bonus stuff. Mm. So anyway, just wanted to mention that real quick. Um but the last song in the album, last the, song the traditional the album. record, the traditional record, holding all these lies. I wrote that in my notes with all K's, um, which Classic. now corn, corn, yeah. which actually, you know what? That's not good. That's <laughs> no, bad. Not good. <laughs> not good. That's bad. I yeah, need to add <laughs> some words <laughs> to that. <laughs> Maybe just make it classic corn and then chorus spelled with a C. Yeah. Yeah. Corn um, is corning on this song, um, but this is just okay. It's fine. Yeah, it gets, I agree. The, it gets the job done. Gets Just the job okay. done. It gets the job done. Um, and he does at the end. He says, "Truth is pain" five times, and then he cries at the end of the track. Which, I'll be honest, I believe him, but also, I feel. Like, I mean, I don't think they've had any album since then where he's like crying at the end of the no. album. I feel like this is okay. Let's shut the book on that a little yeah. bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Songmeanings dot com. No one's there said possibly my favorite song off the album. Uh, oh, and this is where they said uh, that they thought this song was about being sung at Jonathan's wife. And then he goes, and then he comes back. So he did that on July 7th, 2010. And then on August 24th, he's like, yeah, I got it wrong. When I heard that Ross made John sing a song to his wife, I assumed it was this one. Turns out it was actually, are you ready to live? So this person did the due diligence. They did the work. They came back. Corrected themselves. That's right. They they got in there before a true, some, a true gentleman. <laughs> they got in there before someone else could say, this is fucking wrong. Hey, man. Wrong. Wrong. Get it wrong. Um, and uh, that's the album, everybody. Corn 3, Remember Who You Are. 
Um, and now it's the part of the show where we talk about c- 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 canon talk. Talk about the canon. Oh, I miss that. I mm. miss that. Jenny, we'll start with you. So I liked this record. Um, I thought there were some really good riffs on it. I do feel like it was honest in a lot of ways, but I do think that like there was just something missing. It felt a little forced. Um, and it, I did not like reading about what the process of making this record was like. No. For, it just seems like really, I think my opinion on Ross Robinson's production, like tactics has changed greatly since we started doing this show. Like, mm-hmm. I don't think it's actually okay to do this to somebody. <laughs> nope. Um, and I don't know. There's like no output that would make it worth it. And it just feels really bad. that Like the output of that, which was obviously so harrowing, is just like, it's, it's all right. We've heard it before. Right. Like, yeah. sorry about your deep pain. <laughs> um, Meanwhile, Jonathan Davis had to figure all that out post album and get back in recovery and help. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's just tough. But I mean, like, it was a good record. There was never a time that I was listening to it that I was, like, bummed that I was listening to it. Um, But I don't think there's anything that stood out to me enough to be put in the canon. Now, my understanding is you had a family member with some thoughts on this record as well. Yes. Sophie said, I don't like the corn music. (laughs) Wow. She wasn't a fan, you know, but Matt said... Just give her seven years. Seven years. Which I think is reasonable. She's yeah. like two steeped, and a half. Yeah. Steeped seven. in corn. Yeah. <laughs> By the time she's nine, she's going to be coming up to you. Like, Fully indifferent. Fully. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's good. We'll get her. We'll get her there. We'll get her there. Um. So, uh, yeah, I thought this album is, I wrote that it definitely isn't corn's finest hour, but it doesn't feel like a phone in or a cash grab. It doesn't feel uninspired. Feels like there was a lot of work and effort put into it. I definitely liked it better than the last one. Um, but they just don't have any of the best songs on this. Like yeah. they've got sounds and they've got the producer, but they just don't have any top tier songs. Like songs like Oil Dale and Let the Guilt Go, they have the pedigree of classic corn, but they don't stick in your ribs the yeah. way that those other ones do, and that's why they're yeah. not in the set list anymore. Um, I think JD's, JD's vocal performance on this album is top tier though. Like he sounds incredible. Uh, I like Ross's production and the sounds. Like, yeah, I think I like sounds more than songs on this album. Uh. That's yeah. Um, and uh, my favorite tracks are probably "Pop a Pill" and actually "People Pleaser," um, which I think is tremendous and should have been on the album proper. Interesting, but I don't have anything for the canon. Matt, uh, I I definitely feel that I missed head more than I realized during this vitamin, vitamin head. head. Miss Vitamin Head on this record for sure. The the stories of production tactics definitely seem what we would today call toxic. <laughs> yeah. um, very toxic and not um, to be business speaky. That juice ain't worth the squeeze, baby. Mm. Like, what are you doing? No. That's a hard pass. <laughs> yeah. Uh, like, uh, these aren't kids. These are grown men uh, trying to make another album in their discography. And you're like, yeah, but the only way I make records is if you're really fucked up. And I was like, uh, mm, that's not the only way to make a record. And I feel like there's more... Because they're putting that into it, it doesn't play the same sound-wise. There's a lot of great moments, but there isn't anything that elevates the album. It makes me want to listen to older corn more. Like, I want to hear Make Me Bad Now again. I want to hear um, you know, stuff off of Follow the Leader. My favorite song in this listening was Pop a Pill. I don't think it's essential or absolutely necessary. I just think it's a good song for corn in their oeuvre but not like, oh, this is a central corn. So I'm I'm a no for the canon and uh, ready to move on. All right. Perfect. Well, there you go. Corn, this one is not in the canon, um, but that's okay because neither is your first album. Uh, right. so Perfectly placed. Perfectly <laughs> placed. Um, and uh, that brings us to the end of another episode of Roach Coach. Thank you so much for listening. Jenny, thank you so much for coming back to this episode with us. Hey. 
Matt and Lauren, thank you for having me. <laughs> oh, don't worry. I'm not done. I was just saying oh, okay. thank you. I was, I was like, just saying, I was just giving okay. you a general, before we do the joke, thank you. I was giving you a sincere ah, thank you. I see. see Whoops, the, the got en- sincere. The en- no, the end thank you is sincere for me. I didn't realize it was a joke <laughs> oh, for you. Oh, so. It's a fucking joke. Okay, uh, okay. Wow. <laughs> wow. I'm hurt now uh, because uh, I was always the last thank you for mm, seven years. Oh, no, <laughs> boy. All right. A lot of, a lot of truths coming out right now. Um, No. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. No, no, no. Wet no. mouth sounds. No. Wrap no. it up, B. All right. Say hello to us online Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, uh, to YouTube. We're Roach Coach on all of those. Send us an email, roachcoachpodcast at gmail.com. And until next time, Matt, thank you. Lauren, thank you. Jenny, thank you. Thank you. Roach, Roach Coach Podcast. Hot all day, every day. It's the Roach Coach Podcast. Hot all day, all day, every day.